Hey everybody, Steve Bory here from the American Casino Guide, and today we're going to take a trip to Macau, China, which is the gambling capital of the world. Most people think that Las Vegas is the gambling capital of the world, but that's not correct. Actually, it's Macau, China. Although it only has 33 casinos, the gaming revenues in Macau are six times higher than they are in Las Vegas. I've been writing about casinos for more than 25 years, and I've always wanted to visit Macau. And earlier this year, my wife and I had the opportunity to do that. We started our trip by first visiting Hong Kong, which is the biggest city closest to Macau. It's one of the most expensive cities in the world to visit, and Macau gets most of its customers from Hong Kong. Both Macau and Hong Kong are classified as special administrative regions, which gives them governments that are somewhat independent from mainland China. It's about a 40-mile trip to Macau from Hong Kong, and most visitors get there by using one of the high-speed turbojet ferry services. The ferries operate 24 hours a day, the cost is about $25 each way, and the total travel time is about one hour. We spent five days in Macau and visited all of the major casinos. While we were there, I filmed an interview with a fellow American who lives in China and is very familiar with the gambling scene in that city. It was great to visit Macau because it was such an interesting place, but the gambling culture there is very different from in the U.S., and that's something that we discuss in our interview. So, here's my video about my visit to Macau, China, the gambling capital of the world, and I hope you enjoy it. Hi everybody, Steve Bory here with the American Casino Guide. And right now I am in uh, Macau, China. Uh, it's my first visit here, I came here with my wife. And uh, fortunately for us, we have a contact here, uh, 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 Spencer, Spencer Music, who mm -hmm. lives and works in China. And Spencer is uh, a fan of my book and we had corresponded by email. And he agreed to meet us here, and he's been very helpful. He took us out, and we, we went. We had some uh, uh, street food today and gave us a tour of the city. And uh, it's our first visit here, so I wanted to uh, speak with Spencer and get some, some of his background on, on how uh, gambling is different in Macau than it is back in the U.S. But, but first of all, uh, l let's get a little bit of a background on you. How did you wind up in, it? Did you live in, in Beijing? Mm -hmm. I, I live in Beijing, and uh, first of all, it's, it's, I'm really happy to be here. Um, so uh, about four years ago, I was uh, just listening to the radio and heard an ad about a job in China working as a radio announcer, and I've always been interested in it, so uh, applied and Two months later, I was on a plane to China, and then uh, about uh, two years ago, I changed to a new job working as a sports reporter. Um, so I'm a sports reporter and editor in Beijing for Xinhua News Agency. I get to travel around the country, um, go to tennis matches, Formula One races. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. I love living here, and uh, coming to Macau is one of my favorite uh, pastimes. All right, and how often do, do you come to Macau? Um, this last year, I think I went uh, four times. Um, so. Uh, every every few months or so, I try not to come in the in the summer uh, because it's quite hot here. So usually a couple times in the fall, once in the winter, once in the spring. Okay, now now um, I've been reading about Macau for years. I mm -hmm. know it's the number one gambling gambling market in the world, and I I think it's about uh, five times higher. They make uh, mm -hmm. five times as much profits in in Macau than they do in Las Vegas. So, can, can you explain a little bit of the history of Macau and how gambling became so popular here? So, full disclaimer, I'm not an expert on the history of Macau, but um, I, I do know that for most of its history as a gambling outpost in the modern era, um, the monopoly was held by a company called SJM and a man named Stanley Ho, who's now, he's still alive, he's in his 90s. Um, and so they had the monopoly on gaming in Macau for decades. And in 2002, that all changed. And uh, Wynn was given a concession. Uh, Sheldon Adelson Sands was given a concession. And then uh, later on, MGM got one. But MGM's is still tied to the Stanley Ho uh, empire through his daughter. So um, that is when the monopoly ended. And uh, the Sands was the first one to open. And then the Wynn a few years after that. And uh, MGM 
also ha has a presence here. So. Okay, now now this is in the old part of because uh, there's basically the, there's two parts mm -hmm. to to uh, the Macau gaming market. It's the older peninsula where we are now, yeah. and and we are in the uh, Hotel Lisboa, is it? Mm -hmm. It's the Hotel Lisboa. All right, so so we're in your, in your room here, which in the Hotel Lisboa, which was this original SJM mm -hmm. uh, marketing. So these are some of the older properties, mm -hmm. and then the newer ones came, and then further south, there's is that another peninsula down there? Yeah. How, how do they refer to that? So that's called the Kotai Strip. And it was originally, the reason you have different names floating around is because it was originally several different islands. But land reclamation is the, is the name of the game here in Macau. So land reclamation has consolidated all into one big, um, uh, one big land mass. And the Kotai Strip is on that. And that's where you, know, you have the Venetian, the Parisian, which is essentially the Paris, the R copy of the Paris and Las Vegas the new wind property, that's where all the newer properties are being built because they're essentially out of space here on the old peninsula. Mm -hmm. So, And the idea, is so my understanding, the Chinese government wanted to, uh, uh, it's, it's my understanding when these first started, the, all these profits were made from mainland China gamblers who were mm -hmm. brought in on these junkets. Uh, can, maybe can, you, can you explain a little about how these junkets work sure. and, and are they still in effect today? They are very much still in effect. So the way junkets work is um, they're these companies that are based in mainland China who organize um, trips for VIP um, uh, high bankroll players um, to come to Macau and essentially they lend them the money while they're here in Macau. And if they win, obviously they just settle up here in Macau and if they lose, then they go and pay their debts uh, back in mainland China, um, but they do still occupy a huge portion of the VIP market here. In certain casinos, you can't get the nicer suites on weekends because they're all taken up by these, uh, by these junkets. And they operate, so the casinos operate the high limit room, they provide the dealer, they provide the table, but the junkets uh, provide the players, right? So it's sort of the symbiotic relationship between the junkets and the casinos. Okay, so th now from what I had read, it's my understanding that the, when the players are here uh, on these junkets, they owe the money to the rep and not to the casino. Yeah. The, 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 the rep puts up the money for That's the players, correct. and they guarantee the casino that they'll get paid, mm -hmm. and then in, what, in return, the, the rep gets a, a commission from the yeah. casino mm -hmm. for the play? Yeah, the, the rep gets a, a commission on all on all losses and then I think also there's a commission for just bringing the the players there and I would imagine that each junket in each casino has a different um, a different arrangement and the players also get the added benefit of the chips that they buy they're called dead dead chips it's just like a promotional, promotional chip in a, in a, in a okay. US casino um, that they get a certain amount of bounce back right away for buying these these chips so mm -hmm. but the the downside from the players perspective at least if if um, uh, and there are these promotional programs for lower buy-ins as well. But the, the downside is that you can only play Baccarat after you take advantage of these promotional oh. Oh. programs. Okay, so, so now these are the players who bet, most of these players bet huge amounts of money mm -hmm. when, when, when they play, you know, like $10,000 a hand. On, yeah, on, you're, okay. you're, I mean, and that's, that's probably around the, the lower mid-range of what you're looking at in the VIP rooms here. Um, you, you, a million Hong Kong dollars a hand half a million Hong Kong dollars a hand is, is not uncommon. Hmm. Um, and so, and some of the rooms are not even private. They are private in some casinos, um, but for instance, at the Grand Lisboa right across the street, you can just walk in and you can see, you know, these, uh, these players um, losing and winning quite a lot of money. Hmm. Okay, n now it's my understanding again that the Chinese government was trying to get the casinos to not depend on these larger VIP junkets to make their money. And they wanted to uh, have integrated resorts, resorts with uh, shows and, and, and uh, more shopping and uh, things, things like that. So that's where the, it gravitated to the Katai Strip. Mm -hmm. So all of these larger, these are all huge, major, just like on the Las Vegas Strip, big uh, casino resorts. Mm -hmm. uh, and the idea was this Katai Strip was supposed to be like the Las Vegas Strip, they're they're trying to evolve it into something like the Las Vegas Strip, mm -hmm. correct? They are, and uh, it's not there yet. It's still very much a work in in progress. And we'll, I think, maybe later in the video, I can sort of explain how that should 
um, affect someone's calculus if they're thinking of coming to Macau. But uh, the, the Kotai Strip is not the Las Vegas Strip yet. It, mm. it, there's, yes. there's a lot that has to happen. Right, uh, got, got a way to go. Yeah. But uh, my wife and I have been out, we, we've been walking around for a few days, and we've been in the casinos, mm -hmm. and, and I had uh, just some basic questions first before we get into the specifics of each game. But, but a couple of things I wanted to ask you. So, so now they're, they're all non-smoking, these mm -hmm. casinos. And that is nice. That, that is nice, but it's a little strange because they have these little wall glass enclosed booths in each casino that are smoking rooms. Yeah. Okay, so, so they can go in there and they can mm -hmm. smoke within the casino mm -hmm. in those, those little, little glass rooms. Uh, how old do you have to be to gamble? Um, I think it is 18 or actually I, I'm, I'm not sure. It might be 21. Uh, might be 21. I think I got you there because yeah. I, I see the signs on. It's on 21. At the, posted at the, it's mm -hmm. interesting because at, at the posted at the door into the casino and you have to go through a metal detector. Mm -hmm. I'm still not sure why you have to go through a yeah, metal detector. We're having trouble figuring that out. Yeah, because I brought my phone through and I have a selfie stick and, mm -hmm. and it must set off the metal detector mm -hmm. but, but it, they never stop me. They just say, yeah, go, go right through. So, um, oh yeah, so it'll say there you have to be uh, 21, no mm -hmm. one under 21. And then it's interesting they have a, an air quality report mm -hmm. on, the, on the display there going into the casino, which th they could use some of those in, in, in the U.S. Yeah, I agree. And no, no photos, so no. I, we, we can't take any photos inside the casino. Maybe in the U.S. we could sneak a photo in but in China, I'm, I'm not crazy about taking uh, photos and going well, off and to they a are, And deal. so, and I, I just came back from a Vegas trip uh, a couple months ago, and they are much more strict here. Even uh -huh. if you're sitting at a slot machine, if you start to, say, film your play, like a lot right. of the, the slot machine YouTube channels that um, follow your channel probably do, you wouldn't be able to do that in Macau. Mm -hmm. um, because it seems like the second you whip out that phone, there's somebody there to tap you yeah. on the shoulder and say, you know, put and, your phone and, away. And, and the, there is a lot of security in, in mm -hmm. all over the place. Yeah. Uh, much more so than in the U.S. Uh, question on drinks. Are, are drinks free in the casino? It is. That's a complicated question. Um, in some of these older casinos, like the Hotel Lisboa, Casino Lisboa, there are no free drinks other than tea, coffee, you know, some complimentary snacks. Um, in ones like MGM and Wynn, you can get free beer, but that's about it. Now, I don't know if possibly in the high limit rooms and in the high limit slot rooms, this might be different. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the mass gaming areas, um, yeah, you're looking at beer as your only option. And even then, only at places like MGM and, and Wynn. Um, and I think there might be one or two that, that have free drinks, but it just sometimes you have to find the, the right waitress. Um, the, the waitress might look at you like you're crazy when you ask for a drink, even in these places that have it, because mm -hmm. gambling is very serious business in this part of the world and for the Chinese players. So uh, gambling and drinking are not interwoven in the sort of Chinese psyche in the same way that they are for American players. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting you talk about that because I know in the U.S., the average casino makes about 70% of their profits off the slot machines. But here in Macau, uh, they make the bulk of their money, again, probably through these uh, high rollers, in Baccarat. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe the statistics, it's about 80% of the profits come from the game of Baccarat. Now, uh, n I'm, I'm not a big fan of Baccarat myself. I've, I've played the game, I, I, I really don't enjoy it. The, the good thing about it is, is I tell people if you're going to a casino and you want to play a game and you, you don't need to know anything, there's mm -hmm. no, no strategy involved, just don't make the tie bet. And it's a low casino edge bet. But in the U.S., pretty much any time you see a Baccarat table, there are Asian people at the table. Mm -hmm. So there, there's something about the Asian culture that the game of Baccarat appeals to them. Do, do you have any idea what it is? I think that there is an emphasis on luck and fortune in the, in the Asian culture, and that translates into a preference for games that are simple, that, and especially Baccarat, you know, you actually get the chance to touch the cards here, you know, to, to um, uh, flip the cards over yourself. And so you can be really dramatic and uh, really take your time and they'll do rituals, you know, they'll, they'll have their prayer beads, you know, the, 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 the level of superstition here is, uh, is really remarkable. 
And even if you come here and you don't gamble, I would say, you know, go into the casino and watch some of these players. Today we, we saw that uh, completely crowded table where two, t uh, two pair bets, two pair side bets had just mm -hmm. hit, right? So um, you, I, I think there is definitely, and it's the same thing with the dice game, uh, Sikbo, right? It's a very simple game. You just select your bet and there's the emphasis is on fortune and on luck rather than any kind of strategy or work on the part of the player. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're not big on the strategy perhaps, and they're just like the simpleness of the game. Now, now I wanted to go over the basic, uh, uh, the two kinds of electronic games and four most popular table games mm -hmm. and see if we can go over the differences that the, a player would find between here and uh, in the U.S. Now, sure. the first, of course, in the U.S. most popular game, slot machines. Now, we, we went around and we, my wife and I, we played the, uh, saw the slot machines, uh, and there are not, certainly not as many mm -hmm. slot machines as in the U.S., but, but there were a lot. But uh, the thing that struck us is that there were no themed games, mm -hmm. you know, like, like you have Wheel of Fortune. Uh, we didn't see any, any games like yeah, that. Yeah, you see, you see the Asian themed games that you also see in the U.S. casinos. Um, mm -hmm. So when I was downtown Vegas uh, in, in November, I saw some of the same Asian themed games. But yeah, you don't see, um, you don't see any of the, the sort of licensed games that you see in the, in the U.S. So I am not a slot machine player at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I only play it if uh, like it's tied to some promotion. Like I, I had some free play today at the MGM, and I was like, I tried to put it on a video blackjack machine, and they were like, No, you can't do that. You have to go mm -hmm. play it on the slot machine. So I, I played through that free play. But um, I think that uh, the slots here, anecdotally, now the, there's no gaming commission in the same way that they have in Nevada that can verify what the hold is on these machines. My guess, and this is entirely anecdotal, so disclaimer for, for your viewers, is that because there's a lower volume of players that are hitting the slots, in order to justify them taking up the floor space at all, they probably have to be a bit tighter. I would imagine most of the video slots are probably at about a 10% hold. Um, but again, that's just kind of a, a guess based on, if you look at where the revenue is coming from, um, in order to even justify having the slots at all, the casinos would have to set them to pretty pretty rough payback rates. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it, it, make, it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. now, now, I should say, um, all of the games that we saw, they all seem to have an Asian theme, which mm -hmm. in the U.S. now, you, you have a lot of slot machines that, that have an Asian theme. Mm -hmm. and, and the one game that we did recognize uh, from um, the U.S. was a, a Lightning Link. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not a slots player, you may not be f familiar with that one, but it's a very popular game. Mm -hmm. The casino near our house, every time we go to the uh, casino, mm -hmm. it, it's hard to get a seat at a lightning link game where th they're all linked with uh, multiple jackpots. Um, a Is it a progressive? progressive? It's a progressive jackpot. But, but uh, that was the only one, and again, within the game itself, it was all Asian themed. Mm -hmm. so, so that was the only one we saw. Now, what about video poker? How, how's video poker here? It does not exist. Ah, um, <laughs> we didn't uh, see any either, and but much I to, thought maybe you saw some. Yeah, so there, there used to be video poker when I first started coming here, um, but I was not uh, a very astute gambler at that time, which is how I found your channel. And, uh, and from what I know from other friends who have lived in this area for a while, what was here was not, was not good, was not even playable. I think the best game was something like seven, five jacks or better wow. in some of these casinos. So. You know, mm -hmm. there's not any real reason to shed a tear over it. But yeah, there is no video poker in Macau. All right, so uh, let's go to the table games now. So in the U.S., blackjack is the most popular mm -hmm. table game. Uh, what's the blackjack like here in Macau? The rules are very good. Um, naturals pay three to two. Um, dealers stand on all 17s, no matter what the stakes. And uh, you can resplit aces up to four times at MGM and win. Um, also, uh, the video machines, which are even lower, um, have the same good rules. Um, but for card counters, there's nothing because CSMs are in use everywhere. They're ubiquitous. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, what about the craps? Do you play craps? I do. And the, the, the craps here is, is good. It's not great. Um, I think uh, Studio City and um, uh, City of Dreams have five times odds and... Um, uh, pay the correct payout on the field. Um, but we saw a short pay field today at MGM. MGM has three, four, five odds. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, the craps is fine, and it's there. Um, but it's not a super popular game here. Right, I think I've only yeah. seen two, two craps 
tables and in, in, in visits to the casino, but you know, we didn't go to every part, so maybe there were some hidden away in other places, mm -hmm. but again, not, not popular, maybe one or two in, yeah. in uh, each casino. Mm -hmm. All right, now, what about roulette? Um, so I don't play roulette, uh, but it's uh, all single zero, so mm -hmm. um, you, you would know more than me how that affects the game, but it's all single zero. And uh, I think the, the odds, or the, the stakes rather, the table minimums are, are fine. Um, but I, again, I've never played roulette before, so I'm not one to talk about it. <coughs> uh, well, I was surprised that ev every time I've seen a roulette wheel here, it is single zero. So that lowers the house edge mm -hmm. down to 2.7% from 5.26. But it was interesting because we're staying at the Sands Kotai complex, mm -hmm. and the Sands in Las Vegas has triple zero <laughs> roulette. Which is like really bad. Is that like they, a seven percent hold? You no, know, I, I don't even remember what it is. It's so rare; they're the mm -hmm. only ones that offer it. But it's a really bad game, and so I was surprised that that, that they had single zero roulette. I thought they might have double zero, but nope. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Not, is there a gaming commission of any kind that that regulates these games and say they must pay back a certain? You um, know, there, there is. Um, Macau is heavily regulated, but the information is not that available to uh, English speakers. Hmm. Because I was wondering, mm -hmm. maybe there's some Chinese regulation yeah. that says, or Macau regulation mm -hmm. says, they have to have these uh, single zero games. But it's interesting because because it's not it's not too bad a game, so mm -hmm. so it's better than most. In the U.S., it's it's double zero wheels. If you yeah. can find a single zero wheel, much better. All right, now there's a table game that you can find here in Macau that you very rarely find in the U.S., and that's Sikbo. Can you explain a little bit about it? How it works? So it's the Chinese version of craps would be the easiest and simplest way to explain it. Um, three dice are rolled, and uh, people, you know, there are all sorts of different combinations you can bet on. Some of the rarer combinations have really high house edges. Um, the odd even in big small bets are under 3%, 2% and two some change. Um, so it's not a sucker bet, it's not a great bet. Um, it probably won't be of interest to Western players who, who come here. Um, but but it is there, and it's also not a not a game that I uh, give any action to. Mm -hmm. now, now, actually, on on the American Casino Guide website, there's a story called the, I believe it's called the Sixth Bow Mistake, mm -hmm. which uh, Stanford Wong wrote. Uh, probably had to be like 15, 20 years ago, and 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 I put it in the book, and it's, it's on our website. If people are looking for an interesting story, look for that one because what happened was they had it in the U.S., they had it in uh, in, in Biloxi, Mississippi, or somewhere, mm -hmm. and they they printed the wrong odds really on, on the layout, and some people were aware of it, and they made a lot of money, and uh, they, the, the casino was wondering why all these people yeah. were playing sick bow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to go <laughs> check that out because it's normally not a popular game, mm -hmm. but. The, they were playing it because they knew there was a problem, but eventually, as as, as always, what happens in these mis mistakes, they finally figure it out and 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 fixed it. But it's an interesting story. Mm. Okay, so now let's let's finish here with the the big uh, game in Macau, which is baccarat. Mm -hmm. And how is it different here than in the U.S.? So um, the only baccarat table that I looked at in the U.S. was uh, downtown at the El Cortez, and that was a, a mini baccarat table, right? Mm -hmm. So here you get to touch the cards, which has a couple of advantages for the player. It slows down the rate of play, which, you know, viewers of your website and YouTube channel will know that's always good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with the superstitious Chinese players taking their time to pinch the cards, that slows down the rate of play and also provides an element of fun, right? So, you know, if, if, you, if you pull a nine on the first card, um, then everyone at the table is going to start, you know, chanting face, 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 face. You know, if, if assuming everyone has bet the same way, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's it's not as fun when you turn over a face card and you're betting banker and everyone else is betting on a player run, and uh, everyone is yelling for you to get face, 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 face. Um, so uh, it is everywhere here. It is the game of choice. There are some casinos here where that's the only game that you can play, and. Um, in terms of mass gaming, I would say 80%, at least, of the mass gaming tables are what's called commission-free Baccarat. And uh, it's a simplification of Baccarat that eliminates the, the, the .95 to 1 you know, commission on the banker bet. Um, uh, but l l let's explain yeah. to people what happens. You, you can bet player or banker, yeah. or a lot of times tie, and, and I tell people don't bet the tie, just bet player mm -hmm. or banker, and it's not a bad game. So if you bet $10 on player and you win, you win $10. You bet $10 on banker, you win, but you owe 5% commission. So if you bet $10, you would win $10, but they take $0.50 cents as a commission mm -hmm. for the house. 
So, so that's where the commission comes into play. But they have this special version here yeah. called commission free. And um, commission free is actually a bit of a misnomer. There is a commission. Um, it is exacted from you when the banker wins in a total of six, any mm -hmm. total of six. And so then you only win 50% of your bet. And the result of that is a much tighter game. I mean, it's still uh, under 2% uh, house edge. It's not a terrible game, but that makes the, the player bet, the house edge on the player bet is unchanged, you know, 1.24%. Um, but the banker bet on those games, um, it's a 1.42% uh, household, I think. So um, it is a tighter game. Like all simplifications that are introduced to these casino mm -hmm. games, you know, they almost always cut against the player. Right. Now, my wife and I, uh, we've been here two days, mm -hmm. and, and we've gone to a lot of casinos, and we, we walked around, and I'm sort of fascinated watching this Baccarat, because it's, it's I've, I've played the game myself, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really not a fan of the game, but it was fascinating to see how it worked in the casinos, and, and I did notice you, you had mentioned, because uh, it, it seems similar to many Baccarat in the U.S., but in most many baccarat tables in the U.S. are the same size as a blackjack table. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, not, that's not the case here. They're all s s uh, the, lower, the lower tables, and they're all uh, sort of spread out. Mm -hmm. The other thing is we noticed that there would always be like one table where there would be a big crowd around. Mm -hmm. a and I guess this was the hot table, sort, mm -hmm. of, sort of like a, a craps table yeah. in a casino, you know, where you get a big crowd and everybody's happy and they're, they're, they shout. So, so what is the deal with that? So if there's a long run of banker or player wins, um, the table will start to heat up and you know, the uh, Chinese gamblers like the idea, they love the idea of streaks, right? And that's, mm -hmm. that's common to a lot of high rolling Baccarat players, right? Mm -hmm. So if a table's on a streak, everyone will come to the table and even if they're not sitting down, they can bet off the back, right? So they can just bet, on, bet off your bet, right? So if, say I bet 300 on the player, Someone can just come up and put 300 on top of my bet, and then when I win, I give them their 300. Um, oh, they so, put it on top. Yeah. They don't put it behind, uh -huh, like yeah. in blackjack. Okay. Um, oftentimes, they, I think they can put it behind, but Chinese players will just slam it on top of your oh, bet. Wow. So they're very superstitious about, about that. Um, so yeah, when a, when a table heats up, um, uh, it, it can be exciting. It can be... Uh, quite electric, um, but a as I mentioned to you, I am going to try to move away from playing Baccarat as much and start to play Blackjack because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a better game in the long run. Okay, now, now one other thing we noticed about the Baccarat here is they have like stadium seating mm -hmm. and they'll have multiple, they'll have like eight dealers. Yeah, all, and, all dealing games. And so, so there's like a hundred seats and they're all looking down on this row of, of eight dealers and it's shown on a big TV screen over, uh, over there, and then th you could have eight games of Baccarat going on at one time. And are these people who sit in these seats and bet, they have a choice of which game they want to bet on, mm -hmm. or, or are they betting on multiple uh, games um, at a time? I think you can only bet on, you can only place one bet at a time, mm -hmm. um, if, if I'm correct. Um, and uh, they also have both the no commission and regular Baccarat on these electronic games. So if people are interested in playing them, and they can be good for the lower stakes player, um, do not play the no commission version, right? Because mm. there's no reason oh, right. for the yeah, simplification, better, okay. right, uh -huh. uh, on the banker commission if, if, a commu if a computer's doing it, other than just the casino being tighter. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, th this is not electronic version in, in that there's an electronic dealer. These are live dealers. There's eight live dealers. And, and, and it's an electronic version in front of you when you're making your bets, but it, it's a live Baccarat game with eight different dealers, and you have your choice of which one you want to play on. Right. Now, now, here's a question for you on the limits. This, I was intrigued by this because in the U.S., like if you if you if you're walking through a casino, you would have to go to a high limit room to get high bets on on the blackjack game. Let's say it's because uh, normally it's it's maybe uh, ten dollars to four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you go in the high limit room, it'll be you know five hundred dollars to ten thousand dollars. But here, when when we walked around the the uh, baccarat tables, they all seem to have. Uh, now, now the, the starting bets, the minimum bets, w were lower. They did change from, say, what, a 100 or 500 or 1,000 or 2,000. 
but they all seem to have a limit of two million dollars, mm -hmm. two million Hong Kong dollars. So, so that's kind of seemed crazy to me. Like mm -hmm. every table in the casino, it wasn't in a high limit room. Mm -hmm. So, you mean that that anybody can walk up to a regular old baccarat table and bet two million Hong Kong they dollars? They absolutely, th they can and they do. Um, the amount of money that flows around these casinos is is baffling, right? And my my best day in a Macau casino, which I'm which I'm going to talk about. In, in a few minutes, you know, was a 60,000 Hong Kong dollar uh, profit, right? Mm -hmm. And that was awesome, but that, it, it was great, you know, but I, that's chump change. That's absolute chump change compared to, that's less than the minimum bet on some of the higher limit, you know, Baccarat tables. And well, there are some that can go over $2 million. I'm sure in the VIP rooms, um, the sky's the limit in terms of what can be bet. Well, we walked into one VIP room and, and the limit was 2,500,000. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised it only went up half a million dollars. Uh, from the mass gaming. From, from yeah. the mass gaming floor. Mm -hmm. So it seemed a little crazy to me. So that was a big difference yeah. between the U.S. and, and, and uh, Macau. Mm -hmm. and, and one other question for you, please, mm -hmm. on the game of Baccarat. So, uh, so again, in the U.S., if you're at a mini Baccarat table, you are not allowed to touch the mm -hmm. cards. Here they let you touch the cards, but I'm never quite sure who who which player at the table is allowed to touch the cards. Is it always the same player? This is the same position. Does it rotate? How does it work? It's whoever bets the most on that particular hand winning. So the highest bet on the player will get to will get the player button, and they uh, get to pinch those cards. And the same for the banker. Now, if someone is on a particularly good run, often the person who uh, makes the biggest bet will say, "Hey, give the cards to the the lucky guy who uh, who has made who's you know who who is on a good run." Um, but that's obviously just superstition, um, and uh, I always I, I hate doing that because uh, it, it seems invariably I always lose when they're like, "Hey, you know, he's lucky. Give him the cards," and then I cause this guy to lose way more money than I was betting on the hand. So I always prefer you know just let the person who's betting the most. Uh, turn over the cards. Okay, so that, that explains who gets mm -hmm. to uh, touch the cards. All right, now we've gone over all of the um, basic games mm -hmm. and how they differ, basic casino games, how they differ from the, in the U.S. to Macau. And I, I want to ask you, what is your favorite game to play here and, mm -hmm. and why? Well, I was playing a lot of Baccarat for most of my time uh, here previously. Um, but I am trying to move away from playing Baccarat and stick to stick to games where, you know, playing correct strategy will give you a much uh, uh, a much better outcome over the long run. So now it's blackjack, um, and uh, I love video poker. Um, I had a great time playing video poker in Las Vegas. So um, it's a shame that that it's not here and that what was here wasn't very good. Um, so my, my two favorite games to play now are blackjack and video poker. All right, now, now uh, do you have a, a favorite gambling story of, of something that happened to you mm -hmm. here in Macau? It happened right here at this hotel casino on my last trip. Um, I uh, doubled up, so my um, uh, bankroll for the, for the trip was about 60,000 Hong Kong dollars. And over the course of a night, of, uh, uh, and I always bet the banker. So this was a, uh, here in the Casino Lisboa, there are a couple of uh, maybe 500 Hong Kong dollar tables that are regular Baccarat that aren't this no commission version. So I'm betting the banker on you know every single hand, and you know typically you know the banker will win some, the player will win some. But this this table was just on an absolute, um, an absolutely unbelievable banker streak. And so as I started winning more and more, I would increase the size of my bets. Right, and so I was betting you know 10, 20 thousand Hong Kong dollars a hand. And so the, the Chinese uh, players, you know, they descend on the table and everyone's betting banker, mm -hmm. people are back betting on mine. And, um, but it's always time to stop, right? So you know, the, the, the Chinese are cheering for me, I felt like I was a hero. Um, uh, but once I wanted to get up and leave, um, uh, this older woman stood up and tried to grab me by the arm and you know, did, didn't want me to leave, tried to pull me back to the table. And the pit boss had to say, you, know, you, you, you can't touch an, uh, another player. Um, but she just looked so um, uh, distraught that mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't bet anymore. When I was done, I was done. Um, but I sat down and I turned over the cards about three more times, and eventually I lost. And then, of course, once once I lost, I, I mean, I, I I was not betting, but I lost for the table, mm -hmm. turning over the cards. 
and uh, and then they weren't interested in me anymore. I was uh, <laughs> I was I was no Your longer release. a hot commodity. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and by the way, what what's the most you've ever seen bet at a baccarat table? Um, I think I've seen a half a million uh, dollar Hong Kong bet in the high limit room at the MGM what, here on the peninsula. Now, what about a, a, a table you were sitting at? The table I was sitting at, um, probably in the thirty to forty thousand Hong Kong dollar range. Um, I, I don't think I've seen any huge bets at a table that I was sitting at. Mm -hmm. But now, is that one where you were dealing the car? You were touching the car? Um, so typically, a, as I said before, um, if if someone is making a bigger bet than me, even if they want me to turn over the cards, I, I won't do it. Um, because I don't want them to blame me for losing, and I don't, you know, I don't believe any of these superstitions. Um, mm -hmm. Superstitions get you nowhere uh, when you're, you know, playing a game of chance and you know that that involves odds and math. So I, I don't believe in superstitions. I believe in math and mm -hmm. statistically, you know, baccarat is essentially betting on the flip of a coin, mm -hmm. and you will have streaks sometimes, but you will lose sometimes. Oh, uh, well, I guess I got to ask you this because in the U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you're sitting in, in third base and you're the last person to make your decision before the dealer takes his cards, mm. and if someone doesn't like your the decision you made, they'll say, "Well, you, you know, it's your fault that the, the table broke." Uh, you know, uh, the dealer would have busted mm. uh, if you hadn't if you hadn't made that. And, and that, you know, they, they'll yell things at yeah. you. They'll, they'll say things to you. Now, do they ever do that at the baccarat table? Well, I mean, so the cards are dealt according to a formula, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no decision making about who takes right. a card. Um, but, but they're not going to say, well, the way you touched the cards was not, was not um, valid. It's or possible that, that there, there are people that do. Uh -huh. um, you kind of just have to let it roll off your shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but so you, you, you never saw it yourself? Um, really? No, no. Okay. Uh, no, I've, I've, never been, I've never been blamed in like a hostile way for making the table lose. Um, but I have seen some some meltdowns and uh, mm. some uh, <laughs> some bad bad tempers oh. flare up. Oh, okay. So yeah, as, as I said before, gambling in this part of the world is serious business, right? Um, when I go into a casino, I'm not playing with scared money. You know, this is money I've set aside for entertainment. And if I win, you know, that's awesome. Then I was entertained and I made money. And if I lose a bit, then that's you know just the cost of of entertainment. And that's that's how I look at it. Um, but that's not how the Chinese look at it. You know, they're much more serious about it. So I kind of just, it, I enjoy what I'm doing and don't let other people affect me as much. So, sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. And what is your favorite casino here and why? Um, for a, a somewhat fun Western vibe, uh, the MGM is probably my uh, favorite. Um, for for a Chinese experience, so so I really I, I have two. You know, if if I'm craving the sort of Western gaming experience, then M MGM is wh where I go. If I'm craving the sort of vintage Macau feel that a poorly lit old casino like they they have here at the Hotel Lisboa, um, uh, then this this complex, the Hotel Lisboa and the Grand Lisboa, are, are my two uh, favorite Chinese, uh, primarily casinos. All right, and now the last question I got for you is if, if someone is coming, because primarily we deal with a U.S. audience, so mm -hmm. if, if someone's coming from the, the U.S. and they're coming to Macau for the first time, what would you say is your best advice for them mm -hmm. to uh, you know, have a nice time? So if you're coming all the way to Macau um, and you're expecting to just get Las Vegas with some maybe vaguely Chinese window dressing, you're going to be very disappointed. Um, Macau is not Las Vegas. You know, it doesn't have that party feel. You know, you don't have dancing dealers, no party pits, no free flow, any kind of drinks you want. Um, but if you come to Macau with an open mind and understanding that it is that gambling is very serious here, that it, it, that in this part of the world, um, uh, uh, people take it um, uh, as a way to make money. So it doesn't have the same vibe. But if you, if you come here ready to appreciate it for what it is, it, it's its own thing, it's different than Las Vegas, um, then you can set yourself up to have a really great time. Another advantage is, and I think you have found out, that com your, your buck goes comparatively further here in terms of the level of luxury and service that you can get in a Macau Casino Hotel as opposed to in Vegas. You can get incredible service and an amazing hotel on the Las Vegas Strip, but you're going to pay quite a bit for it. Um, here it is comparatively 
cheaper. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Um, so yeah. I, I would suggest if you're coming all the way to Macau, stay at a place like this hotel, the Hotel Lisboa, or the Grand Lisboa, or one of the places here on the Old Peninsula. So the Wynn, the MGM. You want to be walking distance to all the sites. You don't want to have to be all the way on the Kotai Strip in a 20-minute car ride um, to sort of the walkings, the walking sites, the, the, the tourist places. Um, also, there's a website, um, which is mavenofmacau.com. It's a friend of mine, James, who used to write for Mike Shackelford's website. Um, the Wizard of Macau portion of that, that site is pretty out of date now, but this, uh, the mavenofmacau.com site has um, the most up-to-date information in English of, of all the casinos. So you can check, and he does really, really witty and funny reviews. He lives just over the border in, in Zhuhai on the mainland. So he comes here all the time and, and reviews the different uh, hotel rooms and, and, and casinos and has photos. So that can, um, that can aid an American uh, who wants to come to Macau, help them pick a hotel um, to, to stay at. It's a really great, great resource. All right, uh, Spencer Music. Thank you very it's much. It's been a pleasure, Steve. For yeah. spending time with Absolutely. us today and, and telling us all about mm -hmm. Macau. And hopefully uh, some of our viewers will be uh, coming to visit here one yeah. day. And um, hopefully we've uh, given them all some good yeah. information. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks again. Uh -huh. Don't forget that you can see more of our educational gambling videos on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash American Casino Guide.